my name's Lisa. Um, I'm an artist filmmaker, and I was a performer in Brandy Leary's Glaciology. And the experience moved me so much, I wanted to talk to other performers who'd been in it and document our experience. Glaciology is so human, like the entire piece is made out of humans, it's humans movement, you know, humans are the body and that we're also the energy, whereas if you compare that to um, the gla a glacier which is, you know, pre-human, yeah. you know, possibly, you know, not pre, it could be even pre-liquid water. You know, like it is so it's old, incredibly old. And here we are trying to, you know, are we a facade? Are we just like, are we a joke? <laughs> you know, like how can we try and represent this um, yeah. amazing piece of earth? It's yeah. not even earth, ice, ice, and that and air, right? Like that. Talk about all those like. In core sampling, they're, they're just studying these small pockets of air from prehistory to find out what our environment was before we were humans, right? Mm -hmm. It's um, And coming back to that, that rendering, that really struck me, and I can't remember if it was in Chasing Ice or something I read, just that real reading, like, that poetic reading of, like, as the glaciers are melting, it literally is like the earth is losing her memory, like it's just those records, that air, that witnessing mm -hmm. of being there at that time is is dissolving in relation to humans' <laughs> advancement, right? Mm -hmm. Or human domination. Yeah, an imbalance. Yeah. yeah for sure. Which I think what made the piece kind of genuine is that because it was humans doing it, we're also the ones you know, essentially like making glaciers disappear mm -hmm. um, from our like activities. And so in trying to like have humans kind of recreate the piece, it's like this kind of like parallel of what's actually happening. Cause we like, you know, at the end of the piece, like we pick up and walk away and it's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So how are humans affecting glaciers in a way that they might not be there anymore? So that's kind of interesting. Do you think that that, do you think that that was um, portrayed to the audience though? Do you think the audience could actually see, you know, did they just see us tumbling and rolling, you know, a bunch of people m moving along, along a space was, mm -hmm. was, you know, the environmental It was ideas. a very eclectic audience, mm -hmm. so I think that different members probably got different messages out of the experience. That's art. <laughs> you yeah, see what you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I should actually dig up, because we're in a bit of a slower period now, so we're going through our records. We have like huge amounts of um, feedback uh, uh, from the audience that was just about responses of what people mm -hmm. saw. And it's really fascinating and moving and, and in keeping with like uh, responses that we'd had over time to the piece, but uh, like it's there. And also that idea, because for me it wasn't only just about uh, like a one-way relationship to a glacier or representing a glacier or it's also this idea like when I think about glaciers and they actually carved the shape of the earth like they just went slowly across for beyond our concept of time and parallel and reverse to that I was looking at this process that human beings in a very accelerated way are carving across the earth and leaving equally indelible um, effects so that idea the the glacier was holding sort of the piece but it's also for me about like all of the bodies we've dragged through history, like wars, genocide, like we just pile bodies up as we go. Um, and that's equally uh, a part for me of, of the story that just like goes along. Yeah, it's intense. Mm, you were, like, you're right, some of those photos, they are piles of bodies piles and of they bodies. don't look like, they're not, they're not in a comfortable position. No. Like they're, they're throwing yeah. Oh, I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah. That's nasty. And also, like, I don't know if you were at some of the rehearsals. Some of the rehearsals were so... I think I made slightly different performances at all of them, but 
the, the piece is always structured to respond to, to where it's being made and who is making it. So uh, when we made it in Germany, it had mu like a clear, like everyone was just like, it was um, a revisiting of, of the piles of body for Germany and what that meant. There were a bunch of people from many different places in the world, including Germany in that, and that was, had a different emotional impact when we got to South Africa. Um, the government had just intervened in a miners' strike, and the newspaper was uh, filled with, uh, intervened by shooting the workers. So in the papers was just piles of bodies everywhere. So in, when we were doing it in Cape Town, again sat in a different place, like a really sort of like, uh, there was a, a gentleman in Cape Town who drew us for three hours, and uh, he was from Rwanda. And he said, I have seen this, I've seen mm, these bodies, mm. I've seen piles and piles of bodies. And I, he's like, it's making me so sad, and it's also so beautiful. He said, it's such an interesting experience. <laughs> it's wow. like, yeah. And isn't that what's happening now, too? Like, this is the genocide of the glaciers. Yeah. Yeah. I also, um, just a parallel, it really... I remember during the early rehearsals when you were talking about the loss of memory as mm. the as the glaciers erode, we're losing that part of history, and it stuck with me because mm. it, it is such a powerful statement. But um, I, I think there's a parallel there too that sort of ties in actually to what you were saying earlier. As we lost people over the course of mm. the night, I can't speak to the earlier experience of going over that that wooden beaver <laughs> dam, whatever. I wasn't there, so but Rick was. And, and, I, and I, I couldn't tell you what that was. And, and when she left, that, that experience was gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, so it, that happened yeah. throughout the course of the night. Yeah, yeah that thing about it, like impermanence and also like the indelibleness that glaciers have. Like those two things, right? Like they, made lakes and plains and they also have the capacity to completely disappear. It's crazy. Yeah. I feel the weight of history in the piece. Like I really feel the weight of history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and questions like what you were saying about like what is geologic history? Or what is that span of time like yeah. how do you even go there? Um and then like what but my imagining of the state of that geologic history feels much different than when I'm in the state of a human history. Like when I, I do feel like I'm uh, in a, a rolling mass of bodies exiting countries of war or, you know, persecuted situations of strife. Like it, that history or that state of history feels a lot heavier and darker. Like I've done the piece crying many mm -hmm. times in that place and also then it shifts to something really beautiful and sensuous and all of those kind of things but yeah it's a bit of a wild ride mm. yeah. Yeah. which i think was well represented in the piece because there were that like very calm everyone like serene moments that mm -hmm. everyone had and then those more violent moments and i think yeah there definitely is that link between more violent aspects of human history the more peaceful ones um, so and like the more peaceful and violent nature of glaciers in general. So mm -hmm. I think there was a great parallel there. But they're also like I'm always astounded because like the mechanism of the piece, no matter what uh, state or world or stream you're drawing from, is that everyone has an agreement to take care of each other. Like it's just like it does that little beautiful thing about humanity for me. I'm just like. And a group of strangers will uh, commune together and take care of each other mm. with great specificity. Well, in, in that moment, there, there was a divide, you know, the people who were in the glacier and then there was, that, that was one group, and then there were the spectators who were mm. another group. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, you have these different teams and usually, you know, if you, whatever team you choose from, even if you don't choose who's in the team, you know, you will take mm -hmm. care of, mm -hmm. of your, your side, right? That's yeah. human nature. Yeah. Was anyone aware of sound? Like, it does weird things to my audio <laughs> experience. It's like everything yeah. was muffled. I don't know. It's <laughs> yeah, like it's quieter somehow inside it. Yeah. Than... 
but I was acutely aware of certain random conversations. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, did you hear me talking to the guy who's trying to tell me that, like, let's just agree capitalism is okay. I'm like, no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys there for that period? Yeah, I was there for that. Because I, I would just that. see faces going by and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, maybe, maybe the sound. Maybe that's why those beeping trucks at the very mm. end were so loud and so memorable yeah. because it was different because when you were um, throughout the whole night, you know, there was the hum of voices, mm -hmm. but it, it was a quiet night. There was mm. no music around us. Mm. No, except for that one, the hidden microphones. I remember when we were oh, right. oh, yeah. in, the, in the trailers. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that, I was I don't think that I was in the glacier then, but walking by it when you're in the glacier state. <laughs> it's too much. It was too yeah, much. it was it was way too intense. <laughs> I guess because like there's so much physical sensation, it's like your body's kind of focused on that, and you lose like other sensations of it. But it's true. Like there were certain conversations, it's like you couldn't help but hear. Like someone was like, "Ah, oh, he must be drunk." He's like, "It's an orgy," and yeah. he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of pulls you over a second. You're like, mm. <laughs> but well, it's also interesting that uh, like from the outside, it's viewed as so sexual, like mm. by some people. But mm. I think that's like just the easiest way to go. But when you're inside the glacier, there is no sex. Like, it, <laughs> no, like because it, it isn't, uh, like, it isn't about anything sexual. Like, you can have your head in someone's crotch, and it's just like, whatever. Sometimes it's a bit about survival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess because, like, the general public, like, how often do you, like, touch strangers? I mean, yeah. you, like, my, mm -hmm. hug your, like, significant other or friends and stuff, and some people not even that. And so there's so much distance between, I would say, like the general public, mm -hmm. like you have your personal space, you don't touch it, even when you're on the subway, you're like, God, you're crammed up against people, but it's not in like a pleasant way. But for outside people to see a whole group of people being comfortable touching each other in whatever position, like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's probably the default to like, that's really intimate. Like I would mm -hmm. never do that unless I really knew someone, mm -hmm. whereas we're like, Feel free to touch me, anyone. <laughs> I, I totally didn't feel that that um, the other people in the glacier were strangers. Yeah. I didn't I didn't have even though we'd only met each other maybe even that night for the mm -hmm. first time, just the fact that you were in it and you were had agreed to be in it, you weren't a stranger. Yeah. It's like that commitment. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's committed to it. Yeah, I definitely feel like uh, the people around me didn't Feel like strangers but they didn't also always feel like human because they were like <laughs> extensions of myself but at the same time really unknown and yet known I felt similarly someone said earlier it was like it was it's like it's its own organism but I was this little tiny like portion of it that sort mm -hmm. of felt yeah like yeah yeah it was actually surprising when um, when a face would appear, a, fa a friend, you'd recognize a person that you know or that you knew in your life before you were in the glacier and, and sort of it pulls you out of that state for a moment and it'll be like, oh, hey, buddy, let's roll together or something. But, but yes, it was very much my leg or not my leg or not my arm and it doesn't matter. We just roll. You know what I really loved was when you found someone who who did know how to roll well with you and they would pull you with them. So, you know, yeah. you would give it, you know, that where you gave a little bit, bit of momentum and then they would pull that, mo pull that momentum and double it. Mm -hmm. And you could really fly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, and that was such a It was super fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're not at the back anymore. You're not, you're not. <laughs> and someone would give you a bit of a, you know, put their hand on your butt and just push you up yeah. and over. I literally was like surfing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it really felt like a lot of energy exchange was happening. So like you're pulling like energy from someone and passing it on to another person mm -hmm. and that energy is just being rotated throughout this like glacier body. And there was just such a gentle protective energy about it too. Just mm -hmm. that 
-hmm. that care that was taken when it's acknowledging that somebody's head is reaching towards the ground and somebody's hand is there to protect it and mm -hmm. it, that just happened consistently throughout mm -hmm. the night yeah and like even when you're in this like trance state you're still very aware of like that foot should not go on someone's head and like, <laughs> mm -hmm. moving yeah. things along yeah, yeah. you know i wonder brandy have you ever done the piece with people of all different sizes because I found that most mm -hmm. of the people that were in this we're glacier similar, were yeah. similar size, similar yeah. uh, strength. Mm -hmm. And I just imagine, I wonder how it would move, you know, There's, if you had smaller people and larger yeah. people. We had a little bit more differentiation in Cape Town, um, but we not enough people to really know, like, what that whole thing would be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I wonder if it would be like, yeah. you know, if you think about and the ice, you know, you imagine the small pieces of ice, you yeah. know, run kind of a lot quicker on yeah. the surface as opposed to the big pieces of totally. ice which which kind of go underneath. Mm -hmm. You might get some mm. lovely waves. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. I never thought about people's, like, physical yeah. fitness or being bodily aware. There's, like, a whole like, thing about, like, you know, physical literacy and understanding mm. where your body is in space. And I think it was a good group of people who who were very bodily aware because a lot of people had come from like physical backgrounds, even like physical theater and stuff. But if you took a completely different group of people that had like n never done any physical activity maybe or anything, I wonder what that would be like. Mm. We're probably taking a bit l longer, I think, to sensitize people. Because we had a group of artists from the townships in Cape Town and it was like they didn't have a vocabulary of like being on the floor, like, or, so it was super, we had a bit more time. So it was so beautiful to watch them really discover, they got to the same place as everyone else, as we all did, but to really, it's been a long time since I saw, I've seen someone discover that. Like I don't teach students a lot, like I mostly just work with professional artists. Mm -hmm. So it was so awesome to just like, watch them figure that out and also watch them not figure it out. <laughs> like. We had we had some moments where we're like okay let's reset, <laughs> um, but no it was it was really gorgeous because they definitely had different um, physical entry points much more varied than this yeah. One of the things that was interesting and it's coming back to uh, sound and maybe trance a bit, but hearing conversations and the often what I find is people will be like oh, that's an orgy, or oh, that's not hard. But they keep just staying there and saying stuff. And then they just stop saying stuff, but they stay there. Like that idea of like how we, how the trance leaks out or how we um, are big, even bigger than what we are. Like it, it, it was a cold area. It was, I'm constantly shocked when I look at the footage of how many people were there. Like, there were a lot of people at that sort of bulk between 11 and 2. And it just sort of, and that they're watching. Like, quietly watching. It's so interesting that you can quiet down a city mm -hmm. or quiet down someone who's being a bit rambunctious. Just, yeah, fascinating. Also a different way of watching. Yeah. Because they're up high and they're looking down onto the ground. Yeah. Um, whereas normally in a performance, the audience is at a lower level mm. to what a performer would be, which is up on a stage. So oh, just, totally. you know, mixing that up. That and also some of the comments we got back were many things like when we did the practice of watching each other in rehearsal. Yes. But again and again comes up this idea of like, okay, you, you can watch it as this thing, you can watch it and feel it. Or you can watch it like a film, like really just watch like two characters and like do a close up and then zoom out. Like, so there were a lot of people commenting on how they were really just, because we're kind of away from any normal relation, performative relationship, they were really behaving uh, in a way that zoomed in and zoomed out and shifted around, which was nice to hear. And it's really pleasurable to watch, like just letting things float in and float out. It's, yeah, it's quite amazing actually.